Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show. We've got us another tournament fishing scandal we're going to talk about. This one isn't exactly well known. It's a small tournament, but I think there's some important information in it that we can learn from as tournament anglers and also anyone who runs a tournament can learn from this. Some interesting things happen, and they were all caught on camera live, broadcast to the world via Facebook. We'll get all into that in a minute. First, I want to thank all you folks that are regular listeners, regular viewers of the podcast, and all the people who are channel members who have joined the channel, who have clicked that little button down there and joined the channel on YouTube. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you coming back. Uh, If you have any comments you want to send to me, if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave a comment in the comment section. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, go to my website, DieterMelhornFishing.com. There's a contact section there. Links to my guide business here in the Carolinas, all that good stuff. You can reach out to me there and get a hold of me. So I'll give you the background on this tournament. This was a striper fishing tournament. I know a lot of you are into catfish, but bear with me. There's important stuff here that ties back to some stuff in the catfish world and really any kind of... uh, any type of fishing tournament. Uh, It was a relatively small tournament on Lake Norman in North Carolina. It happened a few weeks ago. And uh, it's a tournament where they're fishing for hybrids. I say stripers, it's hybrid bass. This was a hybrid only tournament. And uh, hybrids are basically a cross between a striped bass and a white bass. They're stocked into the lake. It's a put and take lake, a put and take reservoir. Uh, You know, they put them in there, stock hundreds of thousands of them. People harvest them. They had a tournament. And uh, it's a four fish limit in this tournament. And uh, the fish have to be at least 20 inches. That is the state law in North Carolina on this particular reservoir. The fish have to be over 20 inches for you to keep them 20 or larger. So that's the state law. Remember that point. That's going to play important here in a little bit. Um, as it stands on this lake, there's not a lot of fish that big. And when the bite is bad, getting a legal limit of fish can be difficult. And that's what was going on this day. It was hard for some of these anglers to come up with four fish to bring to the scale. So the fact that some of these fish were fairly close to the line is not surprising. What happened was uh, the weigh-in went on as planned, and uh, someone happened to be filming it. They were there, had a camera, uh, iPhone, cell phone, and they were not only recording it, but streaming it live. So all this went down uh, live on Facebook. I was out of town that weekend, not able to keep up with what was going on. But by the next morning, my phone was blowing up with, did you see this? Did you hear about what happened? And, uh, you know, at at first it started out as somebody brought undersized fish to the scale, which technically is illegal. You are possessing fish at that point that are illegal. If you have undersized fish in your possession, you bring to the scale, they're under the 20 inch limit. That's possession of the fish. And uh, that's an important point. Like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, There was an angler. Uh, This is an angler who is, uh, I don't know him personally, I know who he is, a uh, licensed charter captain. Uh, He runs a guide business in Tennessee, and uh, he knows fishing. He's fished bass tournaments. He knows how the whole process works. He brings some fish to the scale, and the fish are undersized. There's video of this. I'm going to roll the video, let you watch it, form your own opinion, and I'll give you mine after we take a look at this clip. Peter. Three times. The golden rule is the, that tape measure don't mean nothing. Yeah, the golden ruler is the official golden ruler. It's a short. Yep, so it is short. I agree. And you're barely touching the tip. I trust you. Yeah, she's she's a short. Mouth closed. Tail compressed. Yep, she's a short. Golden rule on your boat. Same thing. Short fish. Nineteen and a quarter. Yankees. Four fifteen. 
415. Sorry, man. 415. Yeah. Push Yeah, 415. Your tape measure ain't calibrated. Now look at that. Do you want it? I, I'm saying, but I measured it. That's how I measured it. Okay, that's fine. But this is the... Now they might got one of them in their boat. It don't matter. Everybody's <laughs> fishes are getting measured on this point. Put them in here. Come here, let's have some more people. Chuck, Peter, put them in here. Nope, you don't kill him. That one. I'm trying to lose. I'm losing. people saw it. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're good. You know what a golden rule is? Good. It's bass tournaments. How many rulers do they use in a bass tournament? Does everybody agree with that? It says on the rules, the golden rule. Well, there you go. He was obviously not happy, uh, but uh, there's some important things that happen here that, again, I think we can learn as anglers and as tournament directors. Um, the first thing was make sure that when you fish in a tournament and you're required to measure fish, that your measuring device is the same as the tournament director's measuring device. Now, generally speaking, these should be relatively pretty dang close, uh, in measuring a fish. Obviously, I think one of these fish here was three quarters of an inch under, that one wasn't even close according to what was said in the video. Not sure. I was not there. I did not see it. I'm just basing my opinion on what I've seen in the video. Um, you know, the, the other thing is if your fish are that close and it's one thing if the limit was higher to where it wasn't illegal to bring them in. But at this point, you're possessing fish that would put you in violation of the state law. One of the rules, this is what I was alluding to earlier in this club's tournament rules, is you have to obey all state and federal laws. I myself, when I ran tournaments, I had that same rule written into the books. It's a good cover-all kind of rule so that if you've got somebody who is doing anything that violates the law to get a competitive advantage, you know, they're breaking the rules, can be disqualified. Um, I think somebody in this tournament forgot about this because this is what happened next. This angler was not disqualified for having these fish. He was still awarded a weight, ended up coming in sixth place, I believe, and was given money, a check, money to take home, an award-winning money cashing, check cashing position in the tournament. And this is, I think, probably what created more of the uproar than anything online on some of the uh, social media sites out there that got the talk and the chatter going about it. Um, now, back to the whole thing with state rules. In a lot of places, a lot of tournaments write this in. But there are some tournament series out there, very large ones, and I believe BASS may be one of them, that does not have this rule written into uh, their, their list of violations. They cover this type of a violation with undersized fish in another way, but they're very hesitant and standoffish from putting anything in there that says breaking a state law is uh, a violation. From what I've heard, the reason for that is the legality of disqualifying somebody for breaking a law that they haven't been convicted of. And there's some legality and liability and stuff there that some of these tournaments try to stay away from. And it's why they avoid do it. Uh, the, the the bottom line was is that uh, that's where the uproar came in. You've got a rule in place. It's written in the rules. Nobody was disqualified for it. Now, was that on purpose? Was it an oversight? Most likely an oversight. The guys that are running the tournament, I know them. I know them personally. This is their first year doing that. There's a learning curve with doing this kind of stuff. And having a process and procedure and, and really just a, a, a workflow to make all this stuff happen, generally you don't figure that out the first time you do a tournament. And I think this got overlooked in the process. From what I can tell, there was not a protest filed there that day from anyone. Uh, I'm not sure how many people actually knew what happened, knew the whole details of this. Who knows what the whole backstory is on that. But 
The bottom line is the angler was awarded a check and awarded money. Now, I would love to hear y'all's opinion on what you've heard to this point down in the comment section. Let me know if you think that angler should have been disqualified totally from the tournament, or do you just let those fish slide and award them the money as was done? Um, what ended up happening was uh, there was, like I said, a pretty big uproar about this. A, um, uh, uh, a lot of pushback, uh, a lot of stuff said online, and uh, what ended up happening was myself was one of the people who said, hey, you know, it, give the money back. The smart thing to do would be to give the money back, uh, you know, safe face, admit that this was done wrong, and, uh, you know, in the end, that's what ended up happening. The angler actually gave the money back. He admitted that uh, he had broke the rules of the tournament, uh, didn't deserve to come in in the position he came in, and he ended up giving the money back. So, in the end, that's a good thing. That's a good ending to this. But like I was saying in the beginning, there's some stuff we can learn. You know, when you're a tournament director, the hardest thing in the world to do is to disqualify somebody you know. It's hard. And I've said that in any tournament out there, especially catfish tournaments. I have seen rules broken, rules violated by people, and tournament directors look the other way. They force it to the hand of somebody's got to file a protest for them to do anything about it. Even though stuff has been seen, stuff is obvious. It's hard for one guy to step up and file a protest against his buddy for breaking whatever rule violation. It's just something that doesn't happen. Uh, nobody wants a snitch. And, you know, it ends up with discrediting the entire tournament series when that happens, especially when people on the outside see it. They see what's going on. They start to not trust the people running the tournament. They start to not trust the anglers and just the integrity of the entire tournament comes into question. Luckily, in this situation, uh, like I said, the money was given back and I think it all ends kind of well. Uh, the other thing is the interesting part about the rule. Uh, you know, uh, give you, you know, give your feedback and your opinion on this. I'd love to hear that cover all state rule. Is that a good one? Is that a bad one? Is that a dangerous one to have in there? Because, uh, you know, there's stuff that is a violation of state law. And I always said when I was doing this that it has to give you a competitive advantage. If you go blasting through a no wake zone, you get a competitive advantage. You've broken the law. You get a competitive advantage by getting through that no wake zone faster than somebody who doesn't. Now, if you're running down the lake before the tournament starts and one of your lights burns out, Okay. Okay. That's not something that one you did on purpose, you made happen. Uh, and it's not really giving you an advantage by that light burning out. Now, it may create a safety condition. Uh, somebody could run into you, into you. But I never would see something like that as a disqualifying point uh, to disqualify somebody from fishing. So uh, there's stuff like that to where I think there is some grace that can be given. But, you know, bringing in undersized fish, I don't know. What's your opinion? If somebody brings in undersized fish that are under the state limit, that would be if you were stopped by a game warden, a game warden could write you a ticket for possessing those fish. Because, let's be very clear, folks, when you catch a fish, it's undersized, you bring it into the boat, you take time to measure it, and then you put it into your live well, you are possessing that fish. Whether you keep the fish or not, whether you take it home, kill it, and eat it, or you ride around with it, it's in your possession, you're keeping it, you have broken the law at that point by having that undersized fish. Give me your opinion. I'm curious if that's something that is a disqualifying type thing. And, uh, you know, what would you do if you were the tournament director in that situation? Uh, writing rules into this stuff uh, can be tough. Like I said, some of the bass tournaments, the big bass tournaments, have some rules in there that kind of avoid the state and federal law for disqualifying points, but they will write something in there that has to do with the integrity of the sport, integrity of the angler, that type thing that gives them the judgment call to disqualify somebody for doing something. That may be a violation of state or federal law. That may be a better way to go to avoid any of the legalities and litigation that may come from this. Because honestly, that can happen. Uh, when you disqualify somebody from a tournament, uh, it opens up a whole can of worms as to uh, how that can unfold. 
in some cases it's kind of over and done with and you move on from it but there have been cases where some of that stuff has been pursued in court so uh, while this one is not as uh, you know big and sexy as cutting weights out of something it's still interesting that uh, it was caught on camera and was caught live and uh, I think that's a good thing I think having these weigh-ins uh, and stuff videoed uh, somebody there whether it be live stream or just videoed so that people can see it. I think it's a good thing. Uh, there have been catfish tournaments recently within the past four or five years where uh, there have been allegations of undersized fish being allowed to be weighed in and fish that appear to be dead uh, being allowed to weigh in. So I think having a camera there to uh, verify it, uh, you know, to either support it or, you know, show that it's not true. It's a good thing. And uh, it's something we didn't have, you know, as much of 10, 15, 20 years ago in these things. It was just, uh, it would happen and, and the rumors would circulate and you never really knew. So love to hear your feedback on all this. This is one that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it's uh, something that's in this, you know, new big world of technology that we're able to see unfold in front of us. So give me your feedback. Let me hear your opinion on it. And until next time, we'll catch you out on the water.